Great. Thanks for joining us today, Mark. Why don't you tell us who you are and what you do? Sure. Mark Shuttleworth, founder of uh, Ubuntu. I'm a South African living in London, so excuse the accent. Um, uh, very happy to be here in, uh, in Austin, Texas. Uh, I, I uh, lead the Ubuntu project, which is an effort to create a, a world-class, global, freely available Linux platform for the desktop, for the server, and for some other devices as well. Okay. So uh, why are you here? What are Dell and Canonical announcing? So we're, we're announcing very shortly um, a joint effort to put Linux in, in more squarely in the consumer space here in the United States. Um, it is aimed at initially a, 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 a subset of the desktop and laptop devices that Dell sells. Um, it is, um, uh, I think, a response to extraordinary um, volume of requests on the Dell IdeaStorm site. Um, so it's very exciting to see this free software community actually expressing itself, and it's then equally exciting to see a very large company listening to to uh, to to that freedom of expression. So, how did this relationship between Canonical and Dell come about? Well, I think I think both uh, both organizations have been eyeballing each other for for some time, right? Ubuntu Ubuntu has grown very rapidly as a as a desktop platform, and many of, we know that many of our users are running Ubuntu on on Dell computers, and I think on the Dell side, folks had noticed that they were hearing about Ubuntu more and more. Um, uh, I think Michael Dell picked up on um, the the trend of adoption for Ubuntu, um, and so over the last couple of years, we've slowly been engaging and uh, with the results of the Dell idea storm it seemed that there was sufficient um, critical mass for the idea effectively to take the next step and turn some of those discussions into into a project and uh, the team has been working fast and furiously on that for the last uh, couple of months and what are some trends you see uh, for Linux on desktops and notebooks and what's your view of what it's going to take for Linux become more mainstream in those areas? The first observation I'd have is that um, Linux adoption, the patterns of Linux adoption are very different from country to country. So here in the United States and in, in Western Europe, um, it's very much adoption driven by corporates traditionally from the data center um, and on the other side by developers who are sort of self-empowered. So those are the, 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 the adopters in, in the West. Um, and then in, in emerging markets, we see far more willingness to adopt Linux as a general purpose consumer platform. Um, people want something that's resilient to viruses, want something that's resilient to spyware, and they also want something that's much more cost effective than the alternatives. So, so depending on which country you're in, the, the patterns of adoption are, are quite different. And I imagine that what we're going to see over the next couple of years is a convergence where um, more and more uh, mainstream folks choose Linux as a platform um, because of its inherent characteristics, right? Um, so we hear more and more stories, for example, of people setting up a second computer and putting Linux on it because they want it to be very low, low maintenance burden, they want it to just work, or setting up computers for family or friends um, and, and wanting those to be resilient to spyware and so on. So um, um, over the next few years, we expect steadily increasing adoption. I don't, I don't think there's going to be a big bang event when the world suddenly shifts from one platform to another, but I think that Linux is coming into its own as a, as a viable, reliable desktop platform. And what would you say some of the, the barriers are for customers to adopt Linux on the desktop? A lot of times you hear that it's a little bit more difficult for someone who doesn't know anything about Linux to um, kind of implement in, you know, whether it be a small business environment or in their home. What right. would you say to that? Hmm. So the barriers to Linux adoption classically have been things like hardware support and concern about support for the latest peripherals or, or devices that people might add to the system after they've, you know, initially got it up and running. Um, and what we saw on the servers in the server market was that as Linux's market share increased, the component 
manufacturers were increasingly willing to do the work necessary to make sure that their stuff worked well with Linux, um, as well as with Linux as with other operating systems. Um, another concern for people has been the availability of applications and the quality of those applications. Um, and we're starting to see now that in some categories of application, the free software equivalents really are leading the way. So if, if you want the latest and greatest browser, then Firefox on Linux is a very, very good choice. Right? It's reliable and robust and, and has a lot of you know, fantastic features that make it a great browser. Um, uh, there's still a lot of work to do in terms of completing the portfolio of applications that people use every day on the free software desktop, but we're already at, at the point where it's quite, quite usable. And then the third sort of barrier to adoption has been the perception that it was difficult to get help or get support um, for Linux. And I don't think that that is so much about the availability of some specialist companies who provide support, because that's been around for a long time. I think it's that sense that if you, if you call your second cousin who you know is a bit of a computer guy, will he know about Linux or will she know about Linux in the same way that she might know about Windows or the Mac? Um, and, I, and I hope we're now approaching the point where there's pretty much pervasive um, insight and understanding into, into, into Linux as a platform. Um, an initiative like this by Dell is phenomenally important in terms of um, raising the attention within the whole industry, the broad industry, of the importance of Linux as a platform. I, I think one of the consequences of this is going to be, is going to be that lots of s sort of um, computer consultants out there who have Linux expertise but never talked about it previously are going to start to say, hey, yeah, we do Linux too. There's now a reason for them to put Linux on the front door just you know, alongside um, um, the other platforms that they support. And, uh, and that's exciting because a lot of that talent, a lot of that expertise is going to become visible in a way that it never has previously been visible. And that will reassure people that help is available, support is available, expertise is available. So what role do you see online customer engagement? For example, we have Direct to Dell or IdeaStorm tools. How is that going to shape the industry, the overall IT right. industry in the future? So first let me say that I think Dell is, uh, is the perfect company to be launching this initiative because they understand the desire that this market has to, to own exactly the right machine. Right? This, is a, this, this first market segment that we're, we're aiming for um, has very strong opinions about the hardware and the software that they, that they work with. Um, and Dell's um, tradition of giving customers that choice, that flexibility, fits very nicely, I think, with the, the psyche of this market segment. So that's, I think we're starting in the right place. Um, one of the phenomenon we're seeing across all industries is this idea of real-time connection to your customers and your users. We see that very clearly in the free software space because our customers are also our developers, are also our community and our support network and so on and so forth, right? So it's very much a two-way conversation all the time, both in building the product and in supporting the product and in defining the next version of the product. Um, so it's something like Dell Ideastorm is interesting because it introduces that idea to, to, to the hardware industry, which has traditionally been more of, of, has traditionally had more separation between the folks who are sort of designing the products and the people who, who are consuming them. So I think we'll see that meme spread um, to other industries as well. And you talked about the community in Ideastorm. Why do you think the Linux community responded so quickly to um, Dell Ideastorm? When we put out the initial ask of what would you like to see customers and um, invited them to give us their ideas. Hmm. Well, the, the first thing I'd say, and it's cautionary, is that this, this is historically a, a vocal community. You know, for, for folks to become, to become early adopters of Linux, they needed to be people who were comfortable expressing a contrarian opinion, right? They're not, you know, you can never describe the Linux community as, as, as a flock of sheep, right? They're strong and feisty and vocal. So I'm not surprised that they would express very strongly a, a, a desire to be recognized through, through, through Dell Ideastorm. Um, we have to sort of peer more deeply into the data and see whether underneath that sort of vocal um, component is, is also a commercial component. Folks who genuinely would vote with their wallets to, 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 to get computers that have Linux pre-installed so that they save the time effectively associated with getting it set up and configured the way they want. Um, and based on the numbers, it, it, it appears that there is that underlying commercial um, um, 
level of demand. And uh, what we're about to, about to do is, is step up to service that demand.